Hey everyone, it's TJ, the Stereo Bargain Foul, and I am very pumped up today because today, real quick, I want to have an overview of the Burson Audio's High Performance Discrete Op Amps. That's right, these are the V6 Vivid and the V6 Classic, which are basically an upgraded version of the V5i in all aspects, all together. Now, uh, that is to be expected. Uh, the V6 Classic and the V6 six uh vivid they cost eighty five dollars each in the u.s but you could order two of them and i think you can get them for about 145 dollars u.s so down in my description box i will upload their link for you all if you want to go check that out they also have different charts and everything for both of these high performance op amps now these are the dual op amps they do make single op amps also and these are fairly good sized op amps they're about one inch uh, in height and about a half an inch across. So these are some really good size off amps. But today, just real quick, I want to go over my overall subjective humble opinion of how they compare against each other. Because when I compare these off amps, you know, against other off amps, you know, like this size down here. And I have a lot of fun with these little bitty off amps also. And uh, sometimes these off amps may not fit in your DAC or whatever you're going to place them into. Most people use these inside their DACs and we call it off amp rolling. Like people with tube amplifiers, they like to do tube rolling. And you can do some off amp rolling also. It's a lot of fun and it's a cheap way to have fun and to overall get better sound. But when I compared, you know, these high performance off amps to, you know, like my Burr Brown, um, my Burr Brown op amps, my Muse 0102, my JRC 5532. Well, the V6 Classic and Vivid have a bit more overall performance. Sound stage is a little bit wider. I get better details and dynamics, even microdynamics. I can even hear further into the sound stage. Uh, so, uh, real quick, I want to have the comparison between the two, and then I'm going to have you all a really close up look of the uh, Burst and Classic and Vivid Op Amps, and then at the end of the video, so y'all can get a better understanding overall of the sound character of each of these, I'm going to take you all to my back spare room. That's right, I'm going to take you all to my back spare room because I have a lot of budget audio gear back there, amplifiers, preamps, budget speakers, and I'm going to put a couple different systems together. And subjectively, I'm going to choose which op amp I would like better, and I will even tell the reason why. Just to give you all a better, you know, overall um, aspect of which of the different sound characters. I did a lot of critical listening with both of these op amps. I have a listening room that is dampened down. At least 20% of the room is dampened out really, really well. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and jump into this comparison for you all. And yes, I did use the On X8 Magic DAC that you see here in front of you that you can get at Hi-Fi Go, a really awesome company with really great customer service. So down in the description box, I will upload um, <clears throat> the On X8 Magic DAC from Hi-Fi Go, $299 US. And this is the DAC that I use because you can switch out the op amps. Now these are... The Bursons are a little bit big to be switching out the op amps in the On X8 Magic DAC. Uh, you basically do got to flip it up on its up on its uh, top to be able to fit this op amp. But if you're somebody that already owns a Burson DAC that has switchable op amps, uh, you will have no problem switching them out of Burson DAC out of Burson's DAC. But anyways, I want to get straight into this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about my experience with each the V6 Classic and the V6 Vivid. So let's start uh, with Burson's Audio V6 Vivid. First, the Vivid's a little bit cleaner sounding, a little bit more of that top end extension, uh, liveliness. Whereas the Classic has more of that vintage, uh, has a little bit more of that vintage flavor, warm and biting. There's not as much top end liveliness or extension with the Classic, but the Classic still has a good bit of detail retrieval. Just a little bit more color. Secondly, let's talk about dynamics. Now, dynamics are great with both of these, but I will give the Vivid a little bit better dynamics. 
but I give the classic a little bit better overall bass. The bass is just a little bit stronger, but still the Vivid has good bass. Also, it's just a classic. I think it was just a little bit stronger. But anyways, uh, both amps, both of these off amps do have a little bit of a warmish character in my humble opinion compared to other off, uh, off amps I have used. But anyways, uh, enough of that. Let's go have a close-up look and then I'm going to take you all to my back bedroom so I can set up different budget systems for you all and tell you all which one I would actually choose between the Vivid and Classic. Now we all hear sound different, sound is subjective, but uh, I'm just trying to give you all a better understanding how they compare against each other. So let's go ahead and get that close up. So here's you all a close up of Burson's Audio's high performance dual op amp. This is the Vivid. As you can see it's about an inch in length half an inch in width. We got eight pins on the bottom that are gold plated and they are pretty hefty. They're much stronger than these down here. These are the smaller ones. I'll show you all a little comparison. Now do note <clears throat> these Burson <clears throat> Audio Dual Op Amps also come in single op amps also but you can tell they are a lot bigger so they may not fit inside your audio gear so take that into account but i did get the, them to fit the on x8 magic deck i just had to lay its top on the bottom so let's take a close look at the classic here's a closer look at the classic I really like both the Vivid and the Classic. So the Classic is orange. Really good strong bass. Top end ain't as, isn't as extended as the Vivid. But still has really good detail. But yeah, you can tell there's a good size difference. And up here in the top, these are your, I guess, your, your vents. And when I look down inside of here, I doubt if I can... You all can see it, but I will upload Burson's link in the description. But inside here, we have two circuit boards inside. I've had a lot of fun with these op amps. And also, when you order them, you get like this extension. These right here, I'll show you. They've got really strong um, gold pins on the bottom also. And a lot of people ask, well, what is this? Well, this is basically an, an adapter in case, you know, you can't get the uh, the high performance person op amp, you know, inside of a DAC. If it's a hard to get place, this may raise it up just enough for you to have better clearance inside. Just in case. But that is a really nice feature. You'll get this little foam inside these little packs. Plastic. But I've had a lot of fun with these. Okay, so let's go to the back room, the extra back bedroom. And here's how I got the op amps to go in the On X8 Magic Deck. Had to set the top on the bottom. No big deal, no big deal. Okay, we are in the back room right now. So let's hypothetically say I'm using the On X8 Magic Deck which is a really good sounding DAC for its budget price point, close to neutral sounding. And let's just say I had the Eclipse Reference Premier 160 monitor speakers hooked up, and I had the Emotiva PT100 and A300 preamp amp combo hooked up to the Eclipse. Well, I would be more likely to use the classic op amps with the On X8 Magic DAC with the Clips Reference Premier 160 monitor speakers and the Emotiva. The Emotiva being, you know, a little bit on the cool and clean side of neutral. Even during my overview, I talked about the Base X A300. You know, it could use a little bit better bass in the bottom end. And, uh, you know, up, tight, up top, it can get a little bright and a little edgy. Whereas with the classic op amp compared to the vivid op amp, 
as I was telling you, it had a little bit better base, and the top end isn't as isn't as extended or as lively sounding. So let's go to the second choice. Now let's say I have this Pioneer Elite SXN30 High Res Class AB receiver, which has a built-in streamer, built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth. It has that V-shaped sound signature that I do like at times. Has you know really good strong bass, and the uh, top end could use a little bit more detailed when I have it paired up to the reference 160 monitors. So in my subjective humble opinion, this is a $799 US high res receiver when it first came out in 2015. Now you can pick them up for about $300 US. Got a built in streamer, but again with its overall sound character, V shape, real strong bass, top end could use a little bit more liveliness. So this time I would actually go, if I had it paired with the 160 monitor speakers and the On X8 Magic DAC, I would lean towards the Vivid op amp. Okay, number three. Let's just say I had the Audio Lab 6000A. Let's say I have it hooked up to the Clips Reference Premier 160 monitors. During my overview of the Audio Lab 6000A, I was telling y'all it had a little bit of warmth to it. It already had some good, strong bass to it. The top end had just a little bit of a roll off. It wasn't, you know, too forward, too edgy. There wasn't a lot of liveliness in the top end. So if I had the On X8 Magic DAC, I would probably likely choose the Vivid Op Amps. Just to give it, you know, a little bit. It already doesn't need any bass. The Audio Lab 6000A paired with the Clips Reference Premier 160 monitor already has really good bass. But I could add a little bit of that, you know, liveliness top end. And the Vivid still has good bass. But I would choose the Vivid in that combo. So now, let's say I'm using the IOTA VX stack, the SA3 and the PA3. That does have that vintage flavor to it, close to neutral sounding, good bass to it. Everything's just really balanced out very well. Even when I have them paired, let's say I have them paired to the Clips Reference Premier 160 monitor speakers and the On X8 Magic DAC, which op amp would I use? I would more than likely use the classic dual op amp persons because during my overview of the iota vx stack i was telling you the top end does have a nice sparkle to it a really good flavor no it's not too overly lively or anything like that it is about just right but i could see somebody going either way on any of the choices i just put in front of you all with all these amps except my Yamaha 1978 CA810, about a 30 pound integrated amplifier. I haven't serviced it yet, but from past experience, that vintage Yamaha with these Clips Reference Premier 160 mo monitor speakers, I would probably go with the Classic again. Okay, just for fun, I'm going to give a vintage sample. We got the Sansui G8000, very warm sounding monster receiver. If I had the On X8 Magic DAC hooked up to it, and my vintage Pioneer HPM100 speakers, I would more than likely go with the Burson's Vivid Op Amp. So basically what I'm telling you all is uh, neither op amp is better than the other. It's just really going to depend on your stereo system and what you like to hear. Everybody has a, uh, their own subjective opinion about sound. I just wanted to give you all some really good examples. And the reason why, you know, the classic isn't better than the vivid and the vivid isn't better than the classic. The ones that is best is the one that sounds best to you and your stereo system. 
But anyways, this pretty much wraps it up. So until next time, this is TJ, the Stereo Bargain File. Also, I want to give Burson Audio, especially Carlos, a big thank you for sending in the high-performance dual discrete op amps. I want to give a big thank you.